The iPad mini is not too small for photo editing in Lightroom. I use it all the time for my professional and personal work, so today I'm gonna dive in and show you how I do my edits. I've done quite a few iPad Lightroom editing tutorials before now, and one of the most popular ones has been the one I did with the iPad mini. Um, I got a lot of comments on that video from people asking, is it really big enough to use? Is it powerful enough to use? And my answer is yes, it very much is. I love using the iPad mini. I don't use it all the time. If I'm at home, I'm either on my computer, my main PC, or I'm on my larger iPad Pro. But when I'm traveling and I'm really trying to pack light, the iPad mini is amazing because it fits in amongst everything else. I don't need to worry about a massive screen breaking, but yet I can still do the exact same edits that I would do on any other device. So I'll talk more about that as I actually dive in. So what, let's actually just start with one of the photos that I have found to do. So it's this one here. It's this lovely weather-worn tree, um, the roots of which are kind of reaching into these pebbles. Took this up on the north Scottish coast in Aberdeenshire. Um, and it's a, a perfectly nice shot. It's not the most standout exciting thing, but I love that contrast between the pebbles and the smooth wood. Straight away, I can see, well, straight away, actually, I can see that my iPad is a little dark, so I'm just going to brighten it up. And I can see that the uh, the white balance is a little bit warm. So I'm going down to color. Straight away, you will see that I'm using my Apple Pencil. Now, I'll be honest, for the most part, I do not use my Apple Pencil with my iPad. I do find it easier to hold and just to kind of use the sliders with my thumbs. Uh, whenever I do that, I get absolutely berated in the comments on my video, like, how dare you not use an Apple Pencil? So I'm basically just using it to shut those people up. So don't think you need to buy an Apple Pencil if you're buying an iPad for editing, because you don't. It can be helpful, but it can also slow you down. So temperature, we're gonna drag this slider down until it really cools this image off. Don't wanna go too far, but I do want it to be a cooler looking shot, really bringing out the pale white tones of the uh, stones and of the uh, tree before it was a little bit warm. Straight away, I really like how this looks. I'm just gonna hide the film strip while we're editing. Um, I'm going to bring up my crop and I'm gonna go for a four by five crop, which is just gonna bring it in at the top and bottom, make it a little less tall and thin. Bring it down pretty much here and I'm just gonna bring this in like this so that the uh, tree itself is cutting right across that diagonal through the middle of the image. Um, now I mentioned before, but the tools that you will find in, I in Lightroom on the iPad mini are exactly the same as on the bigger iPad or on uh, Lightroom on your laptop or on your desktop. There is no lightweight version which is designed just for your iPad. In fact, you will find the same tools if you're using Lightroom on your phone. And Lightroom as an app has come on a huge amount in recent years to the point where it's basically as good as Lightroom Classic. And I do use both, but I really love Lightroom on the iPad because it syncs all of my photos, it syncs all of my settings, it syncs my profiles, it syncs my presets. So I know that I can load my images onto one device and then pick them up somewhere else. Anyway, where were we? Light, let's go into the exposure tab. And I'm just gonna drop the shadows a little bit, just kind of give it a little bit more form, a little bit more contrast. Um, those highlights, I'm actually just gonna increase those slightly. And I'm gonna do the same with the whites, just giving it a little bit more punch. Let's go before and after as we go so I can see what I'm doing. I really like how this looks already. Um, but I'm gonna go to the color tab and go to color mix out in color mix. That's where you can adjust the hue, the saturation and the lightness of each different color channel. And here, what I wanna do specifically is maybe in the reds, cause we've got these lovely red tones in some of these pebbles and in some of the wood. So what I'm gonna do is grab that red saturation, pulse it up and down and yeah, as I do, I can very faintly see, if I just zoom into this pebble here again, that there definitely is quite a nice amount of red there. So I'm gonna really bump that up, drop that luminance, which is also going to help increase its saturation. And then maybe in the oranges as well, I'm gonna get the hue slider. And you wanna be careful with this one because as we start to go too far to the left, everything goes a little bit pink 
We don't want pink oranges. I want just more deep golden red oranges. So somewhere around here it looks good. And again, I'm gonna increase that saturation. But I wanna balance that out by going into the yellows and easing off that saturation. And if I just sort of, again, go up and down with this slider, you can see exactly what it's doing. It's really pulling back on, on a lot of those sort of warmer yellowy tones. So instead we just get those nice, um, the deep, orangey reds um, that we've put in before. Um, that's almost everything I wanna to do to this photo. The last thing that remains for me to do, have you seen it? That's right, we've got a cigarette butt just hiding between these pebbles. And it's definitely drawing the eye and it definitely shouldn't be there. Someone should dispose of their cigarettes properly if you smoke at all. But that should be easy enough to do. Um, using either the heel, the remove, or the clone tool. Now, I'm gonna just try the heel tool, and I'm just gonna paint across this. And it's then gonna give me this little thing that I can move around and find basically what looks like a natural thing to do. Actually, where it was, though, already looked quite natural. We've got a little bit of sort of blurry line here, but bearing in mind, we are very, very close up on that right now. So I could always play with that feather, something like this. So if we press done and then zoom all the way back out, you would never know that that was there. We can go off and on and you can see that cigarette butt sort of popping in and out of view. But really, you'd have to know that it was there. If I was on my desktop, I might spend a bit more time doing a neater job, but it's perfectly good for me. Um, I'm also gonna do the same with, I think there's a little bit of bird poo on this one. Um, it's just a little bit distracting. So again, I'm just gonna paint that over. I'm just gonna let it put that on the, on the stone there. And again, we've got a really nice looking shot. Let's just go again, before and after, before and after. There would be some more things I might spend more time doing. I might do a little bit of dodging and burning to bring out some more detail on here. Um, I can show you that very, very quickly. I would go to our selective edits. I would get my brush tool and I would just sort of gently paint in on the top here. And this is one time when using the Apple Pencil definitely does help. Um, I would do this. It's pretty rough because I'm using a, a very soft feather to my brush. Uh, and I would probably then grab the whites and if I pulse these up and down, suddenly you can see it's adding this lovely whiteness to um, to that wood. As a result, it's standing out from the rocks a little bit more. So um, something like that I think looks really, really nice before and after. It's a pretty simple shot. I wouldn't wanna spend a long time on it, but I think with just these few edits, we've taken it to a pretty good place. So let's move on to our next shot. And also let's have a bit of tea. Ooh, delightful. Right. Uh, also up on the Aberdeenshire coast, the pretty famous Rattray Head Lighthouse. Now, um, you've probably seen this all over Instagram. It's very, very photographed. And um, in this shot, I just tried to find something that was a little bit different from just the lighthouse in the sea. In fact, behind me, there's the lighthouse just in the sea. You can see, um, yeah. It's nice enough, but it's a that that is a pretty cliched shot of the coast and a long exposure, so the lighthouse it stand, itself stands out. Here, though, what I've tried to do is find some foreground, and I've framed it with these dunes and those grasses so that we're kind of peering through them and we're seeing the lighthouse there. Anyway, same again with the crop. I want a four by five because it just pulls it in at the top and bottom. Um, so I, I much prefer this already as an image. Um, I don't really love this shot generally because the conditions were very, very flat. Um, as we can see, there's not a lot of direction or anything going on. So it might be an opportunity to go into presets. Now presets are great, particularly if you're working quickly, if you're working on location or you're just editing on the train and you wanna get some shots done before you get to your next stop. And so I love having quite a lot of presets loaded into Lightroom because it syncs across your devices and it's an amazing way of just flicking through them, finding some inspiration, finding some amazing different looks to your images to give you a starting point. And there's a lot of bad things said about presets, that it's cheating and that it's just applying a, another photographer's colors to your photos. And to an extent that might be true if you buy, say, 
Pete McKinnon's presets and you just one click apply and then export your photos. But they can be really good ways of applying that preset, getting some inspiration for what you want your shot to be, and then applying more of your own edits over the top so that your photos are still truly your own. They are unique pieces of art. That's how I like to think about them. They're, they're just jumping off points. Um, I use the Visco mobile presets um, a lot in my photography. I really like them, they look great. I'm always asked where to get them from. Unfortunately, Visco doesn't uh, make them available anymore. Um, they just have their app. They used to sell these as a preset pack. They don't anymore. Real shame, I have asked them if they're gonna start again and apparently not. Um, anyway, there we go. A6 RAW or A6 is one of my favorites. I think it has a really nice look to it. But as you can see, as we just flick through, it, we can just very quickly see all of the different color styles that we can get. And this is one of my favorite things about editing on the iPad. It's so quick. All of the settings, it's immediate. There's no lag, there's no delay. When you swipe between photos, it's immediate. I actually find editing on the iPad mini is probably quicker than I find editing in Lightroom on my desktop. And I built a custom built desktop PC specifically for photo and video editing. And yet my iPad mini is quite often, it feels quicker. So again, don't think that you need to spring for the very expensive iPad Pro with the M1 chip, you don't. The mini has got more than enough power. And you can see just how responsive this is as we flick through. Um, these presets. There's no delay at all. Um, it's very, very immediate. Um, and I really, really like it as a result. Uh, let's go back up. And I'm going to go with, um, you know what, A9 looks okay. But I'm going to go with A6. I really like it. It's got a good look to it. Um, let's go with our color. And I'm just going to increase that purple ever so slightly. And actually, you know what, maybe the white balance was fine where it was. So that's okay. Drop our highlights a little bit, slightly increase those shadows, but not by much. Um, and I wonder if maybe I could bring in a linear gradient just to kind of bring down the exposure of the sky a little bit, because it was, no. It looked a little bit bright to me, but once I bring it down, because it's just gray, when I bring it down, it just becomes another, a deeper gray strip. It doesn't look very good at all. So let's cancel that. So instead, I'm gonna go into color, color mix, and I'm gonna play around with some of these sliders. Uh, the yellows should be uh, obviously the sand, um, but we may have some oranges in there. Because right now I'm looking at the sand around the bottom of the frame. It looks a little bit sort of sickly yellow, which I don't particularly like. If I pulse that up and down, yeah, we can see, if I bring that down about halfway, we've got a much more warmer, orangey tone to that sand, which I think looks really nice. Also gonna increase that luminance. You can just see what that's doing here. It's just making it a little bit more obvious. It's bringing it to life. Um, our greens, the greens are mostly in the foliage. Um, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit, a bit more towards the yellows, which I think makes it stand out. Um, but with the cyan and the blue channels, that's really gonna be in the water, of course. And so, and as, yeah, as you can see, if I drag that up and down, it goes green one way and it goes a very sort of deep purpley blue the other. I prefer it a little bit towards the blue here, but I'm gonna counter that by getting the blue and going the other way, because we can see green one way, purple another. So I'm gonna balance that off. And that's hopefully just going to allow those tones to merge a little bit more so we don't have patches of one color here and there. And I'm gonna increase that a little bit and maybe even increase the saturation. Um, I'll be honest, I don't really love this shot at all. It's why I haven't really done anything um, with it, but I just thought that it might be useful to see um, you know, how I might go about applying presets, but um, there's probably not much more I would want to do with this just because it is what it is. It's a nice enough snap from the day, but it's not really gonna be one that I would ever want to have printed out on my wall. So let's move on to the next one. Very, very simple shot here. Just a lovely old brick wall, and we've just got this lovely bit of ivy coming out. So I'm gonna do the same thing. This is gonna be a really, really quick one. Go into um, our presets, and I really think that um, 
A6 is going to work here because I love what it does. It gives it a slightly more filmic look, which I think is really, really nice. Uh, I'm going to slightly in, leave our highlights where they are, but our shadows I'm going to slightly bring down. Maybe increase those whites just a touch. Um, I'm going to bring in a crop and just about here. I'm really wanting the... Um, the green ivy to be in the right third of the frame. Um, it's pretty much straight enough um, going along the lines of the bricks. Um, so I, I do quite like that. It, it, it goes well, I think, as a scene. But I'm going to go again into the color mix because I think I've got a couple of things going on. We've got some weird, almost purpley looking tones over here. I might be wrong. I'm not wrong. If I do that up and down, you can see that we've got like a pulse of purple going on. So I'm just gonna bring those down, the saturation, to about halfway, and also just bring that luminance down. I just think that helps get rid of this weird purpley look that we had. Maybe some of that is in the blues as well. I actually don't mind that there, because it's kind of giving a nice couple of blobs of dark in these bricks, which um, I don't mind at all. Yellows, we've got, yeah, we've got greeny yellow up here on the top of the bricks. I'm just gonna drag that all the way down so that it becomes more of an orangey tone and it blends just much better with the rest of the bricks. Um, I'm also just going to increase that lightness. This helps bring out some of those textures. And the orange of the bricks itself, again, I don't wanna go far with this because look, it goes pink very quickly, but somewhere around minus 20-ish. Um, really helps them stand out as those like deep red bricks. It looks really nice. Um, finally then, in the greens, on the ivy itself, I want it to be a nice emeraldy green, so I want to go up with the slider rather than down. Somewhere like that. Increase that saturation and a little bit increase that luminance. Before and after. Before and after. We've not done loads with this image. It doesn't need it. It's a really nice snap from a walk, but it's not it's not wall art worthy, it's not award worthy. It's just quite a nice um, quite a nice little scene. So I think the changes that we've made here just elevate it from being a, a pretty boring straight out of camera snap to being something a little bit nicer as part of the story of the day. Moving on then to this shot that I took in Sicily. I really like this. We've got some lovely light hitting these mountains. And of course, we've got this lovely bank of cloud coming in over the top. Um, straight away, let's go for a jumping off point with our presets again. I wonder what A6 looks like. You know what? It is one of my favorites for a reason. I really like it. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to really drop that exposure because it's made it very, very bright. Bring down those highlights. Straight away, we've already got this image off to quite a nice place. Um, maybe increase those whites and then I'm going to go into the color mix again because this is really where I think most of my editing work happens. I'm um, going to take that hue of the yellows and really bring it down. There's a lot of yellow in this scene but it's very sort of a pale yellowy green slightly sickly color and I don't want that. What I want is lovely richness in that um, in that landscape, the richness of those tones from the rocks in the mountains and from that sort of shrubland below. So bringing it down to, you know, I'm going to go down to almost minus 60 and I'm going to keep the luminance roughly in the middle. I always grab the slider, I move it one way, then I move it the other. That really just helps me figure out exactly what, that slider is doing to my image. So I play around and then I kind of figure out where I want it to lie. And in this case, I actually really like it like this. The oranges, there's plenty of it. So a very subtle touch here, minus 20, increase the saturation slightly. And I'm also going to increase that luminance because as I do, particularly on those mountains, it really helps bring out some of that detail. So yeah plus 23 in those oranges. Might just slightly back off the saturation, minus 12, it was looking a little overpowering. And what about those blues in the sky then? Because they there is a lot of blue there, and I really wanna kind of keep some of that 
nice texture between the sky and the cloud. So by just dropping that luminance, darkening off the blue has really done that, but it's also made it look a little bit slightly purpley blue. So I'm just gonna counter that by dropping that hue. Not too far, we don't want one of those weird teal skies, but just enough that it doesn't look purple, it looks a little bit more natural. I think somewhere minus 16 is looking good. I could stand it to go a little bit darker. Something like that. If we look before and after, this shot is already looking really, really nice. Um, I think I might bring in a crop. I might do 16.9 here because we've got a very wide scene already. So what we're doing is losing a little bit of that sky, which at the top is just empty space anyway. It's really kind of emphasizing the, the width of this scene, really um, allowing the frame to kind of match the environment, match these amazing mountains. So yeah, I think something like this looks good. Um, it's probably not much more I would want to do, but there are a couple of things, and one of which is bringing in a radial gradient. I'm just going to bring that in like this. I'm going to turn it, drag it out, is going on these mountains. And I'm going to do a couple of things here. Firstly, um, I'm going to increase those whites because again, it's just helping add a little bit of pop to those mountains, kind of help them stand out in the scene. Don't want to go too far, around plus 20 seems like enough. And I'm also going to go to the effects. I'm going to add in a little kiss of clarity. And clarity can be a really, really powerful tool. I know that it's got a bit of a bad rap and it's often what we see quite amateurish um, editors doing in that they sometimes will just add plus 100 clarity to the whole image and then think that it looks amazing. Um, and clarity can look amazing, but I think you've got to be very sparing in how you use it. And in this instance, I know that the clarity is really going to bring out detail on those rocks. It's going to emphasize the highlights. It's going to deepen those shadows a little bit. Um, and if I put it everywhere in this scene, it's going to look a little bit weird. So instead, we're just using it in this radial filter. And if I just start to, again, pulse this up and down, you can see how much more detail it's bringing out on those rocks, um, but it's not affecting anything else. But still, subtlety is key here because even if I start going as far as 30, I think that's a bit much. So I want to stick around here, plus 18. That's all I want to do with that clarity. And I might try experimenting with putting in a little bit with the sky. So again, bringing in that an, a radial filter, uh, a linear filter. And what happens here? If I just pump this up, yep, again, this one's a little bit more subtle, but it is helping sort of um, bring out some of the definition in the clouds. And this is actually one that can stand to just go 100 because it's only applying on this very, very thin strip across our sky. So let's go done. And then looking at our before and our after, before and after, I think that's looking really nice. So here's another one from Sicily, actually, um, in the same area, but just looking a different direction. Um, this was a lovely sunset, but in order to capture the uh, the bright tones of that sunset, I had to really underexpose the shot. So I knew that this was going to be one I would have to do some uh, Lightroom work with. Um, start off with another 4x5 crop, and I'm going to bring this one down um, to about here, I think. Something like that looks good and just slightly straighten it up with this doorway. I think that is already looking better. Um, so yeah, let's start off with our light tab, and I'm gonna bring up my exposure, bring up some shadows, not too much, because it's an evening sunset image. If we bring our shadows right up to the max, we lose a lot of that um, sort of evening drama, the, the contrast, you know, a, a sunset, doesn't have perfectly visible landscape like this. So we want to keep some of those shadows. So I think somewhere around plus 40 is going to be enough for me to allow the um, uh, allow that, that sunset to really feel like a sunset. And we could always bring down some of the highlights a little bit, maybe up those whites, 
But a lot of the work in bringing the real sunset tones back to this image is gonna happen in our color tab with the white balance. So of course we wanna warm this up quite a way lovely warm tones and we want to add some tint as well it was an evening sunset so it's not just about lots of orange light it's about that lovely depth of color so this is looking much more like it lovely magenta tones in the scene now the the, the quality of this screen is really good on the ipads so they're very good for color rendition I've got a massive LED light lighting me up for this video, so I'm slightly struggling to, to see exactly what it's looking like because of the angle that um, I can see. I can just basically see a reflection of it, so I'm slightly struggling here, but I do think this is looking really nice. I'm also going to increase the vibrance a little bit, plus 20. And again, I'm going to go into my color mix maybe turn those yellows slightly more into a deep orange because this is a very natural scene it was a snap on an evening when I was uh, kind of standing out here I don't really want to go too far what I'm trying to do is bring it back to how I remember it which I think we're pretty much there the only thing I have seen that I'm going to do here is what it looks like a little bit of dust on my sensor so as before we bring up this healing tool and Lightroom does the rest. It is very, very straightforward. So before, it's very, very dark and it's quite a cool image. Afterwards, we've warmed it up, brought back some uh, some detail on the ground. Not too much. We can now understand that there is something there, whereas before it was almost falling to black and everything was invisible. Um, but we've still very much maintained that shadowy depth that you would expect from a sunset so it's just about taking a subtle approach and I don't want to overdo the shadow recovery in this shot either because it is it's a very sort of moody day we've got these um, you know storm clouds um, overhead reflected below and I just think if you start ramping up the shadows here you get that kind of HDR look it just kills the contrast and kills the mood in this image so I'm going to up them a little bit plus 20 maybe we could have a look at some of our presets too i mean a1 looks really nice some of these some real mood i mean oh i love the blue tones put in a5 i mean again i love my a6 I always love my a6 but you know what let's go back to a1 and this one here and bring down those highlights a little bit Maybe now we bring up the shadows just a touch. But let's go to our color, and I'm just gonna cool this off. And I'm gonna bring down that tint slightly because it was a little bit purpley before and after. So I'm really liking how this looks. Um, we need to straighten this up because it's on a slight slant. But the other thing I can do is go to the geometry because this does have the upright tools that allow you to kind of straighten uprights because we've got a leaning building leaning in here and buildings leaning in here. And if we just go uh, to upright auto, bing, it just pulled everything nice and upright. It's very, very quick and it's an amazing tool to have to hand. So let's close that down, go into our colors, go into our color mix and we're going to do luminance of the yellows down gets a little bright here it's also everything is looking um a very sort of pale yellow because it has um increased the hue of the yellows here so i'm actually going to bring it down to about here just to make it a bit more natural looking these oranges are also very um weak this is supposed to be a very deep orange on this roof here and it's not so we can fix that by going to about here, that looks great. Slightly increasing that luminance. Already, you can see how much more that punches out from that building. Um, the blues I'm gonna bring down. I think there's some purple in the sky, it might be just a touch. But what I liked before when I looked at the other presets was the one that had like the nice blue cast to it. So we can do that ourselves by going to the color grading tab. And if we just select what's already selected here, the shadows, we can specifically add colors just to our shadows, just by dragging it out to the hue and then the saturation you want. In this instance, I wanted to add some blues 
just like this. Like I've, I've added saturation 17. And we can try and take it a bit further. Go to 30, but it's a little bit much. So I think around 20 looks awesome. Just a lovely blue cast in that shadow. It's almost not that noticeable, but it really does make a huge difference. And now we can try putting some warmer tones in the... Um, in the sky um, while we're at it, but I think it might be a little bit overkill, um, particularly because it's kind of, adding warmth is is almost negating the foreboding deep blue of the storm clouds. So I don't wanna add anything there, just adding that pop of blue to the shadows um, is everything that I wanted to do here. So if I just turn this off and on, you can see the geometry tool has helped bring things in line. We've adjusted those colors, added that nice bit of blue to the shadows. I think it's a lovely shot. But the last one I wanna do is one I took the other day and I've actually taken this in infrared. That's why it looks all weird, um, but I do have a profile that I installed on the desktop version that because it syncs, it is already waiting for me in my profiles tab. If I just go to profiles, we can see infrared temp minus 50 or minus 100. For the most part, this doesn't make a lot of difference because most of my infrared work I would have to do in Photoshop in order to do color channel swappings, all of that kind of thing. But I actually just wanna make this a black and white image and I can do that perfectly well in Lightroom. Um, but firstly, I am just gonna to go to the light tab, bring those lights highlights down ever so slightly and lift those shadows. Then close that down and I'm gonna to go to optics remove chromatic aberration and enable lens corrections. Close that down, go to geometry. And we're gonna do the same as before. Upright goes to auto and straight away you can see it's brought this building in line and this building in line. Before and after you can see it's gone from the buildings leaning back and pointing upwards into the sky to suddenly being nice upright buildings. And uh, the other thing that I'm gonna do, if we just zoom in, we can see I've got another desk spot on my sensor. And I'm just gonna go all the way around that and then done, and then it's gone, perfect. There may well be some others, but that's the most obvious one I could see. Oh, wait, I can see more. There's some here. Again, just gonna go in like that. Yeah, that's fine. And I think there was one here. Great, that looks fine. Done. I love doing black and white editing in Lightroom, um, but it is gonna slightly undo what I've just done because I really like using the black and white profiles that you'll find by default in Lightroom. So you can get all kinds of black and white presets that you can install, but honestly, my favorites are the basic black and white, one to whatever they are, that you will find by default in Lightroom. So anyone that has Lightroom will have these uh, these profiles. And yes, if I apply one now, it will undo the profile that I've already applied, but that doesn't matter. This is just an example. I just wanted to show that I can install a profile on one device and have it transport to the other. But as I go through, you can see just how amazing some of these profiles look. Some really beautiful uh, black and white um, scenes that you can choose from here. And you can increase the amount of the effect with the slider here or bring it down so it's a bit more subtle. For me, I actually really want quite a punchy black and white look here because it really goes well with the um, with the infrared nature of the uh, of the shot. So I've applied that. We go back, maybe bring those highlights down a little bit more, and bring my crop tool back in and just pull it in slightly from these corners. I think it looks pretty good. And I'm just also going to bring in a brush, um, make sure that my feather is at 100%. And I'm gonna use a slightly larger brush and we're gonna paint that in on our grass, which because it's in infrared, it's sort of turned white. And again, you can see just how rough I'm being here. This doesn't need to be um, very fine masking. Now that's there, as you can see, if I pulse this white up, you can just see how much more pop and detail it's bringing to, um, uh, to this grassland in our foreground. It looks amazing. Could maybe bring the highlights up 
and maybe even a little bit of clarity here. I don't want to go too far because there's so many fine details that at 100 it looks very uh, crunchy and, and a little bit too weird. But I think putting some in, maybe around 34, which is still quite a lot, but it's just enough to kind of make everything look nice and crisp, but without it looking too overdone. The before and after on this one is huge, but most of that heavy lifting has been done by that black and white profile. So if you're into your mono photography and you haven't experimented with the profiles in Lightroom, then definitely give them a go because I do have a whole variety of black and white presets that I have installed, but more often than not, I always just lean on those profiles. I think that's everything that I would do for this shot. And that does actually bring me to an end of the photos I had to do. So I do hope that it's been helpful to see how easily I can edit these photos on the iPad mini. It's not too small, it's perfectly sized for any kind of editing really. It's perfectly good for me to sit here at my desk and do it, but also it's small size means that I can just, I can get on the sofa and I can get comfortable and I can hold it and edit it. Or as I said before, I can take it on trips, I can take it on holidays. And it means I'm not having to take a massive iPad with me. It doesn't have as much built-in storage on this, but for the most part, I don't need it because Lightroom has cloud syncing. So even if I import my raw files into Lightroom on this iPad, as soon as it saved those files to the clouds, it will delete the local versions. So I don't have a huge amount of photos clogging up my storage. So it's definitely a great device to use specifically for photo editing. So if you are looking for one, don't think that you've got to go for the biggest iPad possible or the most powerful one possible. Something like this will do perfectly well. But that brings me to an end of the video. If you have found it helpful, useful, enjoyable, or anything else, then do please hit that like button. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.